Great, welcome back to this tutorial series on interfacing Python with MetaTrader via ZeroMQ. Now in this series so far, we've covered uh, a few things. So we've gone from interfacing Python, um, describing ZeroMQ and the its role in the interface between Python and MetaTrader. We've talked about trade execution at DarwinX via ZeroMQ, subscription to market data at DarwinX via ZeroMQ. And we've also gone through two tutorials where we've developed actual trading strategies that use um, the ZeroMQ bridge uh, to execute uh, on MetaTrader. In this tutorial, we're going to go through troubleshooting steps. Uh, obviously, having released the, the bridge a while back now, we've accumulated a lot of very valuable feedback for which if users are watching this who have provided feedback, thank you very much. We are eternally grateful for all that you've um, submitted in terms of bug reports and issues you've experienced that may or may not have been directly related to the bridge. Uh, what we've done for your convenience is compile the most common issues, questions, queries and concerns, etc., that came to us uh, via issues on the GitHub repository into a video today with answers to each and a demonstration of how to resolve those issues, uh, as well as a discussion on the various updates that have uh, taken place over time to the bridge project itself. So let's start with um, MetaTrader specific concerns. We've divided the conversation into two concerns, two main themes, and that is MetaTrader and Python. So with the very first um, in the MetaTrader list, Users have reported it on occasion that uh, they can't see anything on their consoles, uh, but the commands they've sent via Python have reached MetaTrader and uh, executed successfully. So for instance, if you send an open trade request via uh, Python to MetaTrader, it executes, but you don't see anything returned to you. What's going on there? And usually the case was that verbosity, which was a settable flag in previous iterations of the connector, and I'll show you where that variable is. In the init function, you have this underscore verbose variable where in previous versions of the DWX Serum Connector Bridge, uh, this was by default set to false. And most users in our experience simply did not notice that and um, did not set it to true. In hindsight, we should really have set it to true to begin with, but during tutorial demonstrations uh, where lots of features were being demonstrated, this was set to false for that reason so that there was uh, ample space on the screen to be able to demonstrate the features and not have it clouded by uh, updates to uh, subscribe to market data, etc. For your convenience, we've set it to true. And um, in future, should you encounter this issue, more importantly, then set verbose to true as it's very likely set to false. However, this is not the only scenario in which uh, output may not be displayed, but it was definitely one of the most common reasons for output not being displayed, all other things being uh, equal and functioning correctly. So the solution to this is to set verbose equals true, as I mentioned just now, and that will result in future responses from MetaTrader being displayed on the console as well. Now, a very important part of running the bridge is to configure MetaTrader correctly. And we appreciate that many users who the bridge appeals to uh, do not have uh, much experience with MetaTrader. And that was the idea behind developing the bridge to serve the audience who would like to avoid uh, using MetaTrader as much as possible and keep its use to bare minimum. So in light of that, uh, we've uh, added some content here in this video to to show you how to configure MetaTrader correctly if you haven't used MetaTrader before or if you are an uh, intro level user to MetaTrader. So let's go over to MetaTrader and talk about the configuration you need to do, things you need to make sure uh, are happening correctly on the platform in order for the bridge to work smoothly. And essentially these include making sure auto trading is enabled in both the platform as well as the EA uh, and that no heavy EAs are running, heavy meaning resource intensive EAs are running on the same terminal. If you have additional system resources, it's very it's uh, it's advisable that you uh, run the zero MQMQL EA in a separate separate terminal instance on its own. If you have other EAs running on the terminal that have the same magic number, we'll go through the EA settings shortly to show you where the magic number can be found and changed. Then you need to make sure that the magic number you're using in the zero MQMQL EA is unique and does not conflict with any other magic numbers used by other EAs on the same terminal. And uh, lastly, if you have an antivirus, a firewall or internet security application running, for instance, Bitdefender or Kaspersky, or Kaspersky 
uh, or the likes, then you need to make sure that both MetaTrader and your Python environment are whitelisted in that application, in the internet security or firewall or antivirus application. So in terms of configuring MetaTrader correctly, let's um, go to MetaTrader and show you the few steps that you need to make sure uh, to perform in order to make sure that everything is working smoothly. And firstly is this big button here called Auto Trading. You need to make sure that that is uh, selected if you plan on trading, which is the purpose of the bridge, to trade via the bridge um, through MetaTrader and access DarwinX liquidity. Uh, so this needs to be set to the play button, as in this needs to be depressed. If it isn't, then it will be a red button over here. And uh, you don't want that if you are going to be trading live. So make sure this is the green play button and that the button is depressed. And then go into tools, options, click on the expert advisor tab and make sure that allow automated trading and allow DLL imports are both selected. Uh, it's particularly important that allow DLL imports is selected because the EA that you're using in MetaTrader to complete the chain between Python and MetaTrader has dependency projects that are in DLL form. And secondly, those dependency projects also have their own dependencies on the MS Visual C++ runtime libraries. Uh, for which you absolutely must have DLL access. Therefore, please make sure that allow DLL imports is selected and allow automated trading is selected if your intention is to trade via the bridge and not simply use it for market data collection. Um, making sure that those things are in place, the last place you need to go is into the actual EA itself. If you've already dragged it onto the chart, you'll have these properties surface. Um, under inputs, you'll have the various options uh, that are by default set for the EA. Over here, the, the, the ones that you need to change are particular to you. So for instance, the maximum lot size here, I've changed it from the default of 0 0.01 to 0 0.2. If there are any other defaults that you'd like to change, for instance, if there is another EA running on the same terminal that has this magic number, the default one, two, three, four, five, six, then you want to change this to something else, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, or, or something else. As long as the number is unique and that no other EA running on the same terminal has this number, anytime you send an instruction that is magic number specific from Python, then the EA will be able to uh, focus on just those trades that belong to the magic number. The other reason that this is important is because if you have more than one EA using the same magic number, when you send an instruction from Python that affects all trades for a particular magic number and not by ticket, then you are going to affect all those trades and more than one EA as in the zero MQ MQL EA's trades, as well as any other EA that has this, that is also using the same magic number as the zero MQ server EA. So please make sure this is unique. And essentially that's it for the configuration side in terms of inputs. The next thing you want to check is under common. Now, even though you've done the configuration inside MetaTrader with the auto trading button, with the big green play button, going into tools, options, and making sure expert advisors has allow automated trading and allow TLL imports, it's still good practice to come back to this screen, make sh making sure that in the common tab of the expert advisor properties, allow live trading is selected and allow TLL imports and import of external experts is also selected. That completes the configuration side. So as long as all of these things are in place, MetaTrader is configured correctly in order for you to um, use the EA to complete the chain between Python and MetaTrader. Lastly, make sure even though we've done all the steps to ensure that everything is functioning correctly, there's a little smiley icon over here to the top right of the chart that you've deployed your EA on. And that smiley icon is smiley when everything is configured correctly for automated trading. And it is a sad smiley, a sad emoji when it isn't. So trivial, but important because if it's a sad emoji, then you know something isn't configured correctly and that it may affect the functioning of the bridge. That is it for configuration. So that's how you configure your environment, your MetaTrader environment correctly to make sure that you are in a position to um, trade via ZeroMQ.
And we've also covered the DWX Zero MQEA inputs here, hostname set to asterisk. So we didn't cover this, but what this means is that MetaTrader, when you set the hostname parameter to asterisk, it, it means localhost in terms of MetaTrader. So when you execute, for instance, um, when you create yourself a class object for the DWX Zero MQ connector and its default host is localhost, this uh, is equivalent to the asterisk specification when you set host names inside the EA's inputs. So set instead of specifying localhost over there, specify asterisk, and that should do the job. Maximum lot size, as we covered earlier on as well. Now, there are some other particulars that may come up if the dependencies are incomplete. For instance, a few users reported how um, I'm getting resource timeout errors. And uh, for your information's um, sake, here is where the actual resource timeout error is actually in place. When you attempt to send an instruction to MetaTrader and uh, a, zero er a zero MQ error again exception is raised, that's when the resource timeout, please try again error is displayed on your console. And this usually happens when there is something at the MetaTrader end that is not functioning correctly, as in you sent an instruction but did not receive a response from MetaTrader uh, leading to this timeout. So if that is happening, in our experience with the testing that we've done, this is usually due to missing dependencies in terms of MS Visual C++ runtime libraries. So we resolved this issue in 100% of the cases by having people check their Visual C++ runtime library installations. And in all cases, their C++ runtime libraries were either out of date or not installed on the system. And why this is important is because Visual C++ runtime libraries are a dependency of the libzmq component of this bridge and uh, libsodium as well, I believe. So you have to make sure that these are installed. You need to have Visual C++ runtime libraries installed in order for libzmq and libsodium to function correctly. If you don't have these, then please install them, download them from the Microsoft website. A simple Google search will get you there. And once installed, please re restart the computer after installation and then run MetaTrader and load the EA as we've been talking about. Another error in the MetaTrader series of uh, concerns that were brought to our attention was getting error 129, and that is an invalid price error. Now, all the testing and development for this bridge was done using Darwin X terminals. And in our testing phase, we did not encounter error 129. The error 129 is an invalid price error and usually happens when the price that you request for an order uh, was not fulfilled by the broker. Um, in 100% of the cases where error 129 was brought to our attention, the user was using the DWX 0MQ connector bridge on a broker that was not Darwin X. However, there may be other cases where error 129 comes up. We haven't encountered one yet. However, if you are using a Darwin X terminal, and have encountered error 129, which is essentially, which means that the price you requested for your trade operation could not be fulfilled by the broker, as in you got a requote. And you've either been requoted a price and must attempt the order again, or that the market is already too far away from your requested price. This is not the norm at Darwin X. However, there are certain events such as news releases where this could happen uh, when the markets are moving in very volatile fashion. We haven't yet encountered this in our testing, but please inform us if you do encounter this so we can come up with additional solutions to it. However, at this point in time, uh, we don't, do not have a solution for the error 129 as it is essentially an invalid price specification and you simply need to redo the order with the most recent up-to-date price and that can be only that can only be done by you uh, on the terminal. MetaTrader not responding to Python commands sent via 0MQ. Now this relates to a successful handshake most likely not being in place, a handshake between your Python environment and the MetaTrader terminal. In the past, previous iterations of this code, we did not have enough in the way of uh, visibility when a user connected from the Python side of the bridge to MetaTrader. 
In the most recent code updates, we've added ZeroMQ socket monitoring. And in a nutshell, what this is, is that for the two important, most important sockets that we, that do almost everything in terms of trading and command exchange between Python and MetaTrader, these being the pull and push sockets, we've implemented monitoring whereby we get the monitor socket for each of those pull and push sockets, and we instantiate a thread that listens for events happening on those sockets. And the event that we're interested in that informs us that our uh, function is complete, that the two entities have connected successfully and can process things now, is the event handshake succeeded event. By incorporating monitoring into, and this is by default set to true, you can switch it off if you'd like to, but having it switched on is useful so that you can see what events you're um, pull and push sockets received, what status, what states are they in? And the handshake, uh, event handshake succeeded, event notification tells you that um, everything is good to go. If you're particular about uh, each socket being uh, in the right state, in a handshake state, then please simply go to underscore zmq dot pull socket status and push socket status and see what their values are. If things have been done correctly and the handshake was successful for both pull and push, then these should be true or else they would be false. So what this means in the context of what we just discussed here is that when MetaTrader does not respond to Python commands sent via ZeroMQ, in most cases, it was because uh, an unsuccessful handshake was the issue. So by having monitoring in place, you can monitor what the status of your connection is. And if you have a successful handshake, then things are as they should be. If you don't have a successful handshake, you will most likely see a delayed or retired um, event raised. And delayed means that, for instance, uh, MetaTrader is not responding because the EA is either not functioning or there are some other issues on the MetaTrader terminal preventing the EA from communicating with your Python environment. Retired is in response to a closure on the socket, and that will also be dis and that will be displayed when that happens. So in summary, in either of these two cases, no data exchange can occur. When event handshake succeeded is detected, only then can data exchange take place successfully. So monitoring uh, being incorporated as a default true in this latest iteration of the code gives you the visibility you need to make sure that your Python environment and MetaTrader are in sync as far as data exchange is concerned. Then we have Python specific issues. Uh, so for instance, where can I access the JSON output returned from MetaTrader in response to my commands? Um, this is available any anytime you send an instruction from Python. So let's try one now. Let's say we would like to get the status of um, open trades on the account right now. Now I know from uh, having no trades open on my demo account at the moment that this will result in nothing being returned other than an empty JSON output. This output here that you see is stored in a variable called underscore ZMQ in this case, underscore thread data output. That's where the most recent JSON output returned from MetaTrader is always stored. If you'd like to see where this is in the code, you can see it over here. There is also a slightly more convenient way of accessing this information. If you've already instantiated yourself an object, you can very simply use the get response function and that will access the thread data output variable and return to you what's inside it. That's where you access the JSON that is returned from MetaTrader. The functions that you're um, using in this uh, script, for example, DWX, MTX, get all open trades, some users were attempting to do things like this. Underscore output equals underscore ZMQ dot get open trades. This will not work because these functions don't return anything. So um, by simply reading the code, you can see whether a function returns a value or not. All the DWX, MTX functions store returned outputs inside thread data output. And therefore you need to access any output that you require through the get response method or directly by accessing thread data output. So that covers that section. Then we have the next one, 
do DWX MTX functions return any values? Ah, so we just discussed this, the thread data output accessible via get response. Now, another question raised often is why can't I see anything on my console after uh, executing some functions call, function calls and MetaTrader is executing them, but I'm not getting anything back. So you see that this is almost exactly similar to the query we've received on the MetaTrader side that can't see anything on your console, but commands are reaching MetaTrader successfully. The, the answers here are also exactly the same. You need to make sure firstly that verbosity is um, set in place. So make sure underscore verbose is set to true. If that is not the case, then you then need to dig. If that is the case and verbose is set to true, then you need to dig deeper and Here's where the current status of your push and pull socket comes into play. By having monitoring in this latest iteration of the code, you're able to see what the status of your pull socket and push socket is. If both have status set to true, it means that both encountered an event handshake succeeded event uh, from the socket monitoring updates. And that means that the MetaTrader and Python environment are able to exchange data. So hopefully this summary of troubleshooting steps is useful to you in all the um, debugging and uh, issue receipt and closure that we encountered. These issues encompass 99% of what was reported to us unresolved. If you have any other issues that have come up since then, please do make us aware of them. However, in its present state, the uh, DWX uh, zero MQ connector bridge has gone through uh, significant performance improvements. Uh, some of the issues to do with me on the MetaTrader side were how the script the MQL EA was dealing with the context that is a necessary part of this framework and uh, not shutting down correctly in past iterations. That has been resolved since and that has res resulted in significant performance improvements in terms of how MetaTrader, how, how, how much faster and more efficiently MetaTrader responds to uh, queries that we send it and also shuts down the context correctly when it when the EA is deinitialized. So to give you an example of how fast this can be, obviously I could write a loop and do this much faster, uh, but the minimum uh, has to be respected. The minimum latency of one millisecond has to be respected when MetaTrader 4 is concerned. However, if I do this manually, then uh, you can see that as fast as you send your instructions. So manually is obviously not the best way to do it, but point being, that the response is almost instant. And in terms of executing orders, so let's go to zmq dot underscore, let's generate ourselves an order. First, I need to change the lot size on the default, which is 0 0.01. So let's say this is my order. And I'm going to set the lot size on my order to 0 0.2. Now I'm able to send this order to MetaTrader via the new trade instruction. And inside order, we set the order dictionary to my order. That will result in the order being executed on MetaTrader. And MetaTrader will respond with this um, JSON output telling us that the uh, trade with ticket 94070504 was opened at so-and-so time at a price of so-and-so with a stop loss of and take loss, take profit of so-and-so. If we go over to MetaTrader to make sure that that's happened, another update to the MQL EA code being that you now see all instructions printed in your experts tab. We just confirmed that the trade was executed, which it is, and all those values have been returned to us successfully. You can also close the order by ticket or by magic number as we've covered in previous tutorials. Here for simplicity, we'll just simply execute a close all trades and that will result in MetaTrader closing the trade per our request and returning a successful value to make sure that this has actually happened. Go back to MetaTrader and see that the trade has disappeared and instead landed in our um, history tab right here. So that covers the troubleshooting and updates section uh, in this tutorial. Uh, we went through some of the most common concerns brought to our attention. If you have encountered these before, now you hopefully have uh, uh, one place to come to and find the solution. Uh, other than this, the ZeroMQ Python application, as well as the EA have both, as I mentioned, undergone significant performance improvements. 
and uh, you're now able to get past some of the bottlenecks to do with latency that were in place in previous iterations. We now have uh, sub millisecond responses being the case in this uh, bridge between Python and MetaTrader via GMQ. Therefore, if uh, latency was an issue before, it uh, unless you're trading very high frequency, in which case it will become an issue since we do have to contend with a one millisecond latency um, minimum. And then, and so unless you're doing high frequency trading, very, very high frequency trading, uh, you should get good response times uh, between Python and MetaTrader now. If you have any other issues that surface that weren't covered in this tutorial, please bring them to our attention by either writing a comment on, below this video or sending us an email to info at darwinx.com. Or the best place to do this is to go to github.com forward slash darwinx, go to dwx 0 q connector, go to issues, and then create a new issue. This is the best place to submit new issues so we can um, deal to them and provide you a solution right there and more importantly document them like we have to produce content like we have with this video today. Future updates, uh, a note about those. So uh, a fair number of users have come to us talking about security that in its present state the DWX Serum Q connector um, could permit anyone who had access to the endpoint being connected to uh, in, in full knowledge of the fact that there is a, a zero MQ server EA sitting there waiting to accept commands could do that. So at this point in time, it is advisable that you run this bridge if you use it in very, very secure environments that only you have access to. However, we are working on a curve ZMQ solution to incorporate curve based key key based security between client and server applications in this bridge. So in future iterations of the DWX ZeroMQ connector bridge, we will have public and secret, public and private keys being in the picture, whereby authentication will be necessary between client and server, without which no functionality present in the bridge will be accessible to the client application. So stay tuned for those updates as they come. Thanks again and see you in the next tutorial. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, coworkers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.